Satan Baby, a spooky yarn for Yuletide, told by Sir Desmond Sterling. Chapter 4 Charles whirled around. A figure had entered the barn. A tall, translucent man, haloed with an unearthly glow, entirely enveloped in what looked like Christmas decorations and tinsel, but forged from a very solid and heavy metal. Agony was etched on the queer chap's face, and his gait was that of a man weary of his existence. Cunnilinga fell to his knees. Are you? Are you? The ghoulish cove's jaw flapped open, revealing a veritable cemetery of teeth and breath to match. I am the ghost of Christmas Hell, he intoned. Christmas Hell, repeated Cunnilingus slowly. I didn't summon you. I am the spirit of all the bad Christmases past, the bauble banshee wailed. The arguments, the, arguments, the, ingratitude, the ingratitude, the disappointment, the, disappointment, the indigestion, the indigestion. It, all it all lives on in me. me. Cunnilinga tried to put on a brave face. Unconvincingly, Charles thought, it was just a variation on his usual weaselly one. The dead chap looked vaguely familiar somehow to Charles, but he couldn't put his finger on it. Maybe a member of his club. Mosley's of Pall Mall. The phantom exuded the air of a club bore, the sort of fellow with whom one frantically avoided eye contact, for fear of having to talk to them about their grandchildren or their upbringing in Swaziland. Whoever he was, he was spooking Cunnilinga, and that was a jolly good thing as far as Charles was concerned. Have you come to make me see the error of my ways? Cunnilinga smirked feebly. The phantom laughed, a horrid, hollow sound like a baby regurgitating a live frog. Hardly. Hardly. You are are already already doomed. doomed. Cunnilinga smiled weakly. The ghost of Christmas Hell jabbed a bony finger at the toothy Satanist. Seriously Seriously doomed, doomed. with no no time time off for for bad bad behaviour. Cunnilinga looked very frightened. I am am here here to take you to hell, 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 where you belong. Cunnilinga squeaked from both ends. But isn't that what you always wanted, old chap? Charles asked in, he thought, a kindly fashion. But, 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 stammered Cunnilinga. I haven't finished my work on earth yet. I still have chaos to cause, evil to unleash, wickedness to spread. Don't Don't worry. worry. Humanity Humanity can do do all that that for for themselves themselves. perfectly Perfectly well well without without you. you. And with that, the Yulish ghoul rummaged in its frock coat, produced a stake of holly, and rammed it into Cunnilinga's tubby little chest. There was a ghastly scream, a veritable children's school orchestra playing away in a manger on a million recorders. (coughs) And the infernal necromancer was engulfed in a ball of flame, like a brandy-saturated Christmas pud, until all that was left was a sad pile of ashes. The seasonal apparition turned to face Charles. Charles cleared his throat. Well, thank you, old chap. Sporting of you to help us out. That rogue is a blessed nuisance. So, are we finally free of him? The ghost of Christmas Hell stared hard at Charles, not speaking. You're not one of the Wiltshire Christmas Hells, are you? asked Charles politely, 
I was at school with their middle son, Norbert. Ended up as governor of some frightful Kazi at the dregs of the Empire. The festive spectre's face cracked into the ghastly smile Charles had ever seen. I see, I see when you, when are, you sleeping. are sleeping. I know when you're awake. I know if you've been bad or good. And with that, the Yuletide ghoul vanished, leaving behind his final words. So be good, for goodness sake. Charles shivered. Was one's behaviour really scrutinised all one's life? Now he knew how the poor wretches who lived under the yoke of communism felt. The animals in the barn ceased their filthy copulation and resumed their cud chewing. The donkey stopped attacking Staunchpo, giving the valet the perfect opportunity to deck the beast with a swift uppercut. The creature's eyes crossed and it swooned to the ground. The three shepherds ceased their revolting activities and looked sheepishly around. They dusted themselves down, hauled up their underpants, nodded curtly at each other, and limped out of the barn, each going very pointedly in different directions. Charles heaved a huge sigh of relief. Simon rushed up to Lady Selina, who opened her eyes, yawned, sat up, and said, Hello, Simon, darling. Has Father Christmas been yet? Simon bit his lip. I say, Lady Selina, I have something awful to tell you. Brace yourself. Marjorie stomped up to Charles. Some host you are. This is the worst party I've ever been to. I need a drink. You and me both, muttered Charles. And they all left the barn to return to the house and resume their Yuletide celebrations. Fifteen minutes later, Charles rushed back into the barn and picked up the baby. Don't worry, old thing. If no one claims you, there's always a place for you in the home for wayward boys. Merry Christmas, young fellow, my lad, and a happy new year. Sir Desmond Sterling's Satan Baby was written and performed by Anthony Keach.